Question number 15 of 15. If you give me the right answer, it is worth one million pounds. If you give me a wrong answer, you still get 32,000. You lose 468,000 pounds. <laughs> Which county cricket side is based at Chester Le Street? Which king was married to Eleanor of Aquitaine? Which monarch was known as the wisest fool in Christendom? It's worth a million pounds. The other ones I've been so near 90%. I, I wouldn't know. I'm delighted to say I haven't got a clue. I think it's Henry II. <laughs> All around the world, television viewers have been waiting for the moment when their version of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire would produce its ultimate winner. It's already happened in America and Europe, but in Britain, the million pound prize had remained elusive. Until the night of Monday, the 20th of November, 2000, when a quiet and unlikely contestant called Judith Keppel made television history. This is her story. Like thousands of others, Judith had called the millionaire phone lines and reached the final stage of selection that would decide if she would get on the show. I realised if you want to get on, you do have to make a lot of telephone calls. They had one man who'd been on in Australia and then came to England. And I remember him saying he'd made 400 calls. I mean, I didn't make anything like 400 calls. And luckily, they rang up before I'd gone too far, as it were. But I also thought that as most people get to £1,000, you can pay for the telephone calls that way. Hello? Hi, is Judith Keppel there, please? Yes. Hi, I'm calling from the office who wants to be a millionaire. Oh, hello. Hi, is now a good time to talk? Yes, fine. OK, because it will take about ten minutes, OK? Yes. Yeah. The normal reaction when we find our contestants is often one of uh, thrill, shock and su real shock and surprise, and they often can't sort of contain themselves, and they're rushing about, and they panic, and they've, they scream to their family on the phone, that kind of thing. Whereas Judith was very, very cool, very calm, very, very collected. So, at our expense, are you able to travel to London on the 14th to record the show? Well, I mean, the only thing that bothers me is, is the lorry drivers are converging on London that day. She was uh, very concerned about every eventuality and how she would pl plan the whole, the whole thing for herself. She'd always been kind of fascinated with the show and thought it was absolutely brilliant and always said, oh, I'm going to ring up, and then did ring up to try and get on it. But, we, you know, you slightly think, well, yeah, right, she won't get on it, you know. So, it was a huge surprise when she did. Right, we've got ten brand new contestants waiting to play for possible one million pounds this Saturday night. Let's meet them. They are. When she first arrived, I thought she was ever so slightly barking. She was just very odd. She seemed to have no idea how the show worked, who I was, or what was going on. And she was completely bewildered by things like fastest finger. And she said to me at one stage, quite early on on the first afternoon, she said, "What happens if something goes wrong? Do you stop?" And I said, well, not really, why? And I said, well, what sort of thing? She said, well, what happens if I faint? And I said, well, you won't faint, don't worry. You know, it'll be all right, you won't faint. Nobody's fainted in, like, two years. He said, yes, but if I did, would you stop the show? And I said, yes, we probably would, because if you fall out of the chair, it won't, you know, it won't be much of an entertainment. <laughs> and I thought, well, I'm sure that poor girl, you know, will never get in the chair. She just seemed to be sort of, I don't know, out of touch with it completely. Starting with the earliest, put these British Prime Ministers in order. Two people had gone before me, and I was already sitting there thinking, we're going to go home, nothing's going to happen. I was disappointed, having got that far. I've always thought the fastest thing was the, the, the real hurdle. Let's see you got it right. Lee's got it right. Only one, Judith Keppel. Thank you. Look at me. Hello, Prime Minister. Oh, come on, let's do that. Interestingly, when Fastest Finger came up, she was the only one right. And I thought, oh, it's that woman who thinks she might faint a bit, you know. And so it started. And I found her quite hard work. This is Judith Keppel, a garden designer from Fulham, up in the audience there, looking very proud, his daughter Rosie. As a garden designer, Judith's ambition is to let Alan Titchmarsh mess about in her shrubbery. <laughs> Over two years, I've probably played with five or six people, and I have to say, I think nearly all men, who I thought, this guy could win a million. 
And, and with Judith Keppel at no point, certainly on the first night, I think, you know, that this is a million pound possible winner. And I sort of slowly warmed to her, because she's actually terribly nice, but she's quite reserved, she's quite shy, she has tremendous dignity. You know, she will not lose her cool. Let's play Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? It was terribly exciting. I mean, curious enough that that heartbeat music, which is much softer than it is when you watch the programme, it's not blasting away, but it's there in the background, somehow gingers you up even more, hypes you up even more. I mean, I actually loved it. And the other thing about it is that when you're in the chair, you're in a sort of circle of light, and it blots out the audience altogether. And you, all you can see is your screen, and you can see Chris across the way. And so you're completely isolated and therefore very focused. Now how are you feeling? I'm getting more nervous. More nervous? Rather than less. Why? I don't know. That's water? <laughs> no, thank you. Ah, okay. Don't mind me asking. Okay, <laughs> have a look. I was pretty nervous, but I was very, very high. And I think that's why I talked to myself through the questions, ready to slow myself down. Because um, I, I felt that I might answer too quickly and, and say something too quickly and get it wrong. Well, I know you went to school in Scotland. I wonder if the audience, do you know audience? <coughs> Judith, you can't just do it like that. <laughs> it's up to you, you've got three lifelines. I'd like to ask the audience, please. Okay, audience, on your keypads, please. I found him incredibly supportive, fun enough, because I had a sense that he was so professional that if I made a complete idiot of myself, he'd completely contain the situation and, and it would be fine. And I felt very confident with him. What do you think? I wish you'd tell me. <laughs> Don't tease. Tell me. But I always tease. I know you do. It's the best fun I have. <laughs> Oh, all right then, you had £8,000. You've just won £16,000. £16,000. Uh, you know what that noise means? I'm afraid that means it's the end of the show for tonight. The next question you face when you come back at the beginning of the show next time around will be worth £32,000. The Saturday transmission was recorded on Tuesday. And then the Monday transmission was recorded on su Sunday. So we had from Tuesday till Sunday to sort of try and live a normal life. On the morning of Judith's second appearance on the show, Chris Tarrant was in another television studio. Spookily, that morning I was doing Breakfast with Frost and David was talking about the show or whatever and Joan Bakewell was one of the guests. You've you got know. to let someone win a million soon. You've got to. Well, you can't let them. It's there. It's mm. there. I, 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 I think probably I've played with five or six people now in, in, in the last two years who, who could and should have won a million pounds. And it'll happen. And we're not going to dumb the questions down. It'll just happen. What I didn't realise, it would actually happen that night. I mean, it was just bizarre. You know, it's, it was an amazing night. When she came back, it was like, you know, she was sort of through the first hurdle. So she was obviously more relaxed. Hello, welcome to Monday Nights, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? At the end of Saturday Night's show, Judith Keppel here, a garden designer from Fulham, ended the show on £16,000, and the good news is she still has two lifelines remaining. But still, I have to say, at no point did I think, this is a woman who's going to win a million pounds. I sort of thought, yeah, you know, she might get to 125000 if she has a couple of, you know, reasonably easy questions or whatever. So, good luck. Thank you. How has it affected you? Because you said your whole life has now become... Multiple choice questions. Yeah, that's it. I was standing at the bus stop the other day, and you know they have a, a grid like that on the bus stop. And yeah. I said, now, which is the bus that does not go to Piccadilly? <laughs> 74. B, 25. The 35. <laughs> Etc. Right. The second time, after the rollover, I wasn't nearly so nervous. I really enjoyed it. It felt familiar, and I liked being there. I knew it wasn't really frightening in that sense. But I felt incredibly high. And, but at the same time, also d detached. It was as if someone else was doing it. Duffelcoats are named after a town in which country? Now take your time, you've got two lifelines. Um, I don't think it's Holland, because it doesn't sound like a Dutch word. So it could be three things, and I don't know. 
You um, could you could do 50-50 and then phone for Yeah, I think I'd like to do 50-50. Okay. Computer, take away two wrong answers. Leave Judith the right answer and the one remaining wrong answer. One of those is worth £64,000. One would leave you still with 32000 I don't want to use a lifeline at this stage, I must say. I first started to think that Judith might get the million when she didn't phone a friend uh, on the duffel coat question. She started using tactics there, and I suddenly thought, maybe she is playing cannily. Maybe she is going to go all the way. Um, and then I just sat in fear and trepidation and jubilation as she watched it going further and further and further. You just won £64,000. <laughs> As she kept getting the questions right, I thought, oh my goodness, you know, she really could do this. And also I knew that she'd be really good on the higher up questions. She's incredibly well read and very intelligent. So I did, I suddenly, you know, sitting in the audience, you suddenly get that feeling, so, oh my God, she's going to do it. You're four questions away from one million. Have a look at question number 12 of a possible 15. Complete this stage instruction in Shakespeare's The Winter's Tale. Exit pursued by a tiger. She had that lifeline left. And the next bear. question, which I thought she'd know, Gone. exit pursued by a bear, and she hadn't a clue. I'm afraid I don't know. I, I would like to phone a friend now. It is absolutely terrifying sitting at home, waiting for the phone to ring, setting yourself up for a potential public humiliation. Hello? Jilly. Yes. Hiya, it's Chris Tarrant here on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. Good evening. Oh, goodness. <laughs> Judith read the question out, and I heard complete the following stage instruction. I thought, oh, no. And then I heard In a Winter's Tale, and I thought, ah. And then I just heard her read the categories out and went straight for the bear. I know this one. I'm 100% sure it's a bear. Oh, bless you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm absolutely sure. Oh, Jilly, thanks so much. Well, she sounded um, pretty confident. 100% is quite high. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, she's the sort of thing she would definitely know, so I will definitely go for bear. Final answer? Yep, final answer. It's the right answer. You just won £125,000! Hey! Getting to £125,000, that's a, quite a big sum of money to win. So I got more excited at that point. I didn't let myself think that I can do this. I mean, I didn't let myself think that. But winning a million pounds is exactly what Judith did go on to do. Find out how in part two. The most extraordinary thing about the whole day was its ordinariness. She was just another contestant. It didn't seem like a special day at all, and it was only as the program progressed and she got higher and higher and higher that everyone started to think, oh, this might be the big one. Have a look at question number 13 of a possible 15. It's worth a quarter of a million. From £125,000, I thought, this lady could win a million. I think it's the first point at which I thought, she is extraordinary. She could actually go all the way. And her extraordinary calm through it did actually calm me down, I think. I do know this. You know it? Yeah, I think so. It's a pigeon. Because you eat them in America, they're called squabs. Aren't they? <laughs> Judith, it doesn't work like that. No, I know, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I forgot. There's such a lot riding on it at that point, and that, that's the tension, I think, which is why I tried to talk myself through it. I mean, that was to slow myself down, because I said the answer, almost immediately, but then would have to slow down and go through it and check it, check that it was right. You want to play? Yeah, I want to play. I thought of Pigeon before the thing lit up, so I would like to play. Final answer. Final answer. <coughs> Give me the check. You don't want that anymore. You've just won 250,000. <laughs> oh, look at this one. But we don't want to give you that. <laughs> you're trying to be calm. I'm not really. Oh, no, you're not. Okay. Not really. You seem very calm. You've got 250,000 pounds at this moment. Have a look 
at the next question, number 14 of a possible 15. Who is the patron saint of Spain? St. James, St. John, St. Benedict, St. Peter. I think it's St. James, and Spain is called Santiago. By that point, I just thought, go for it. You know, this is your one chance. You know, just go for it. Why not gamble a bit? I mean, with re within reason. You'll go away with something, and you'll have a pretty good experience doing it. Do you want to play? Yes, I do want to play. Final answer. Yeah. You just won 500. <laughs> I've been very lucky. You haven't even been brilliant. <laughs> you haven't been lucky at all. I just said, I've been very lucky. You have not been very lucky. You've been absolutely brilliant. You can walk away now with £500,000. If you give me a wrong answer, you still get 32000 You lose £468,000. <laughs> <laughs> That's quite a lot, Judith. Yes, I know. Gosh. <laughs> but it's worth a million pounds. Have a look at question number 15 of 15. Which king was married to Eleanor of Aquitaine? Henry I. Henry II. Richard I. Henry V. I think it's Henry II. <laughs> Even when the million pound question came up and she actually said, I think I know this, and there was a huge gasp from the audience. My God, somebody's going to play for a million. Knowing that they would lose £468,000 if they were wrong. I think even at that point, I didn't think she'd do it. I thought at worst she would for some reason give me a wrong answer. But I thought at the bottom line, like nearly always happens at that level, I thought she will say... I think it's Henry II, you know, but I'm out of here. I did it at school for A-levels, and I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to remember. I mean, Take your time. A long Take as long time as you need. Um, I do think it's Henry II. I think it's Henry II. It was incredibly exciting, that, because I did feel I knew it. I wanted to make sure that it was Henry II rather than Henry I. I know. And I felt I had to slow down. I think because it was such a lot of money, there was an element of gamble in it. I've, it felt like an element of gamble. I was pretty sure. Pretty sure. Oh, my heart. Mm. I think it's worth going for. I knew that she wouldn't have answered the question unless she had a pretty good idea. And also, again, because it was history, I sort I of... The minute it came up, I thought, oh, you know, she, she could get this one. And at the end of the day, I don't think she would have risked that much money if she really didn't have a clue. Final answer. Yep. Final answer. One of those four is worth... <laughs> one million pounds. Three of them would cost Judith Keppel £468,000. Find out what the right answer is in a couple of minutes. <laughs> I always thought quietly, wouldn't it be wonderful if one day somebody goes for a million and we go, we'll take a break. And I thought, I bet if it comes up and we go to a million pound question and somebody gives me a million pound answer, I'm sure I will bottle out. I will not have the courage, if you like, the sheer neck to take the break. And. Uh, I thought, oh, what the hell, let's stretch it a little bit more. I mean, it must have been the longest two and a half minutes in Judith's life. I just sat there. Um, he went off. I think he knew at that point. I think it would come up on his um, screen. Because when it goes orange, it, the answer comes up on his screen. And so he, he, I think, knew, went off. I think, I suppose, look up what he was meant to say when someone won a million. Chris um, sort of came backstage and I ran out the truck to go see him. We just sort of looked at each other and we're going, she's done it, she's done it, what do we do now? I watched him get walk off and looked at his back and wondered what it was saying, if anything. It was cruel, you know, no question. But 
at the same time, you know, I was about to tell her she won a million pounds. So it wasn't that cruel. I mean, it just, it just stretched it out a bit. I mean, there must have been, you know, 40 and a half million people in this country shouting the word, BASTARD, at their sets, with one voice. Welcome back to the third part of tonight's Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Just before the break, Judith Keppel was asked this question. Which king was married to Eleanor of Aquitaine? Henry I, Henry II... Richard it is I, one of the great the delights Prince. for me. It's a wonderful moment when you think somebody's right, you think they've just won a huge amount of money. And uh, when I looked down and I knew Judith was right, it was just... Yes, you know, yes. I mean, it was wonderful. You've just won one million! It was as good as I ever hoped and dreamed it would be. It was just, just the most exciting night. I mean, it was just fantastic. I mean, I just remember looking around and amongst everything going on and people all around me, you know, jumping on seats and chanting and screaming and whatever. Um, and the crew were just all hugging each other. I mean, big hairy blokes were shaking hands and they all came up and shook my hand and I shook theirs and whatever. And yet even then, there was Judith in the middle of it. <laughs> it, was, it was just Judith going, oh, wow. And, oh gosh, I mean, it, she was just so calm. You are so cool. I can't believe it. That's right. Believe it. You have won one million pounds. You do feel like you're slightly in dreamland. And after she'd done it, we went back to the dressing room and sort of sat there. And I mean, I had a very <laughs> stiff vodka. Um, and then we were all really silent. And then every now and again, we'd sort of get really bad giggles and go, "Oh my God, you're a millionaire!" You know. <laughs> So it sort of didn't really sink in for a couple of days, actually. I can't believe it. Have a look again. Judith, have a look again. Yeah. Look, Rosie. Look, Rosie. It's ever so nice. Mummy's won a million pounds. I felt emotional. It was a tremendous sort of rush to have won it. I mean, and the roar in the studio was... That was fantastic. And it was incredibly exciting. It was incredibly exciting. There's no question about it. <laughs> Good luck. Have a fantastic night. God bless you. Judith Keppel was the first person to win one million pounds sterling on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire in the UK. And, you know, it's like the first person to climb uh, Everest or whatever. You know, there will be others, but she was the first. And she was, I mean, she was a great winner. Heartbeat returns next Sunday evening at ten past eight. While next tonight, with just over three and a half hours to go, our programmes for New Year's Eve continue with Inspector Morse.